A few years back, I had an opportunity to do a consulting job for a company that managed a bunch of MRI centers, these little community centers where patients come in to get their MRIs done. And they had about 30 sites nationwide, very successful company. And I was contacted by one of their founders to try and sort out why, especially on some of the older sites, they were having system failures due to the process chillers going down. And it was quite interesting because out of the 30 sites, they had 10 that had been working great for a long time, the oldest 10 that they had. And then over the years, the trending had turned into multiple failures, whether that had to do with pump failures. They had about four, maybe five pump failures, plugged up strainers and things like that. Now they had a facilities person who took all the calls and sorted it all out and of course naturally the initial look at it was that the service contractors weren't doing their jobs. And I kind of get why, why we came to that conclusion but before they jump to conclusions because finding good service contractors that do work on process chillers for medical imaging equipment is not easy. So they had me come in to try to figure out, all right, what exactly is going on here? So the first thing I did is I looked at their maintenance checklists, which were okay. Uh, there was a few things that needed to be improved, but for the most part, it was a pretty basic checklist. The other thing that I looked at was what exactly the failures were all about. And what I found was, again, as I mentioned, plugged up strainers is one. And the other one was they had about four, and I, I can't remember if it was four or five pump failures. And a couple of those pumps, the contractors were uh, forward thinking enough to actually take the pumps to their shops and have them torn down, took pictures. They sent all those pictures that made it into the job files that I had to review. And after a quick look, it was obvious that the reason why they were having at least the pump failures had to do with air entrainment. Now, I'm not sure if you work on process chillers. I'm super happy that you're checking out this episode and checking out the podcast because on a closed loop application for a process chiller, air entrainment acts like sandpaper. These micro bubbles break up and they turn into just a, a lot of really small pieces that wreck into the metals and they cause all kinds of issues. In a past episode, I covered uh, discoloration of process fluid, and that is one of the things that air bubbles can do. It can cause sloughing of metals and things like that. So back to our scenario here, that was actually what the issue was, was air entrainment. And the other thing that they found out was on some of their systems, even though the piping was copper, some of the interconnecting fittings were brass and other metals. So again, the air entrainment caused some issues that caused their strainers to plug up. And of course, all this stuff would happen outside their normal maintenance cycles. Now, a lot of times the service technicians caught stuff before it turned into failures. That isn't really necessarily talked about as much within a company, this MRI company, you know, they, they would say, wow, that's great. And then they'd kind of go on, but they do notice when the, when the systems break down. So flash forward to now, and I had an opportunity to talk to a guy named Mike Millard. And he, is, he has a company, he has a patent on a product called Sweep Clear. And I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, I am a huge fan when it comes to air entrainment of the tried and true Hoffman number 79 automatic air vent. I've designed hundreds of systems in my career working process chillers, and that was my go-to. And I was talking to Mike Millard and he basically said, well, there is another way. So he sent me some information on this um, product, this sweep clear product. And my first reaction was, really? It looks like just a rolled up bundle of mesh of some type. And after we t I talked to Mike for a little bit, he shared with me what this stuff does. And I was fascinated by it. And uh, this is a what I call an Occam's razor product. And what I mean by Occam's razor, if you haven't heard that term before, and I may, I'm paraphrasing here, but basically what it means is all things being considered equal, it's usually the simplest solution is always better than a more complex solution. And that is basically what this, this product is. Now, Mike's outfit is not a sponsor of the podcast. I just happened to run across this product and thought it was interesting. So those of you that are 
contractors and technicians out there that might be plagued with pump failures or discoloration of your system fluid and no matter what you do you continue to have problems and you suspect that you have air entrainment and just as kind of a side note and I think Mike will talk about this in this episode that I'll be uh, that'll be playing here in a minute the interview is that if your system's not totally silent in other words when the pumps are running and you're not in and, and you hear stuff usually that is air entrainment and that's never a good thing in any process chiller loop if you're checking out this episode by way of notification on one of the social platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, or TikTok, just go ahead and click on the link provided and it'll jump you directly over to the ProcessChillerAcademy.com website where you can check out this entire episode on both video and audio only formats. If you could do me a favor, and I know you've been asked this a million and one times, please click the like in whatever platform that you're jumping over from. That helps tweak the algorithm and get the word out to more people. I'd really appreciate it if you would do that before you head over. 